Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. Tarzan leads his party through the jungle to a point where all vegetation ceases. Before them lies a dreary vista of black and red lava rock, gradually rising to form the volcanic rim of Tuanbaka, the mountain of sunrise. Tarzan discovers a road over the desolate terrain, worn smooth by the sandaled tread of millions of feet, and he and his friends set out over this centuries-old highway across the barren waste. The road plunges into a deep, rocky gorge, and Tarzan and Tom ascend a narrow path to a smooth ledge above the road where they discover a cave and close to its mouth a bit of Helen Gregory's clothing. As they are about to enter the cavern to look for further evidence of the missing girl, a great scaly four-legged creature of prehistoric origin rushes out to meet them. Snorting and roaring its challenge, it advances straight toward Tarzan. In the word of Buddha, Tarzan, it is a full-grown dinosaur. Run for your life! Would you like to run, Tom? Get back out of the way! Riga! Riga! Below in the valley, Margaret, Darno, Wolf, and Larson watch the scene on the ledge above them with horrified eyes. At Tarzan's warning cry, as it rings out across the canyon, he bounds forward to meet the attack of the monster. With a leap, he clears the swaying head to land astride the long, upraised neck. His gleaming knife rises and falls a dozen times, but no steel can pierce that armor plate back. Following weirdly, the horrible brute tries to shake off the ape man. The huge scale encrusted tail whips round. Tarzan has struck a glancing blow and knocked to one side. To save himself, his free hand grasps the ridge of bone along the creature's spine. He swings down under the mighty throat. One searching glance, and Tarzan's keen eye detects the madly pulsing juggler vein under the soft, unprotected skin. This time, the deadly blade finds its mark. The ape man leaps clear as the maddened brute, with a choking roar, lashes up furiously in its death throes. From the giant throat streams unceasing a crimson flood. The squat, ugly legs stagger and crumble beneath the terrific weight of the great body. A last gasping cry, and the huge beast lies dead. Oh, my Buddha. We can search the cave. Be careful. There may be another of those things inside. By the gods, Tarzan, when that beast's tail struck you, I thought you were gone. If it hadn't been for that ridge on its back. Well, as it was, I was almost knocked off. Uh, there's nothing to indicate that a human being has ever been in this den. Right. Come on. We'll get back to the road again. Down the precipitous cliff path, Tarzan helps Tome to find the safest hand of footholds. In a few moments, the pair reach the roadway. Tarzan! You are unhurt? Not a scratch, Margaret. They kill sort animal. What was that terrible creature? As I told you before, like nothing I ever saw in the jungle. You gave it a name, Tom, didn't you? I did. And this will interest you, Darno. That beast was one of the earliest of the dinosaur family of the carnivorous type. Tom, you cannot mean... What? The meat-eating dinosaur belongs to a period before the Pleistocene age. Yes. Yes, a reptile that lived and thrived 25,000, perhaps 500,000 years ago. And here today. It is incredible, Darno. But why did that thing attack you, Tarzan? The cave was evidently its home or den, and it objected to our entering it. Oh, but uh, what in the devil did you want to go in for? 
Helen has been on that lead. Oh, le bon Dieu. Avec that monster. Oh, my poor. Don't worry, Dano. I am positive that Helen was never in that cave. How can you be so sure? Her captors made a hurried camp up there. By all indications, I have found this piece of her wrap legging. I believe she cut it off purposely, hoping we might find it. Uh, you uh, spoke of her captors. Yes. Tom, do you recall those scraps of meat we found up there on the ledge? Yes. It was cooked meat. Did you notice that? No, I saw only the scraps. That means that Elaine is in the hands of human beings. Yes, Darno. But who or what they are, we don't know. Then in the name of heaven, let us go on. Yeah, sure. And don't nobody take a step without his rifle in his hand. The next thing I see, Ben, shoot first and ask questions mm. afterwards. Yep, we, uh, we go on now, but Tarzan? Yes. Uh, Wolf, you and Larson go ahead. Tom and Magra next, and Darno and I will bring up the rear. No, fool. Come on, Larson. Yeah, sure. Not so fast, Darno. I want to talk to you. Yes, what is it? Those pieces of meat I spoke of on the ledge. Wheat? And this sun, that terrific heat, they should have been spoiled. They were not, which means that the people we have to deal with are not far in advance of us. Nom, dum, nom, dum, nom. Not so loud. There's no need to worry the others any more than necessary. You know, we've all felt that we were being watched. Oui, mon vieux, I know that. Well, someone or something is watching closely. Whatever it is, is closer than we imagined. I sense it. You have an idea who or what? Not yet. I've ranged ahead behind to both sides and found nothing. We must keep on going and wait. Whatever it is is following us will show itself sooner or later. And then... But now let us join Margaret and Tom. What is it now, Larson? Come here, Tarzan, please. I don't know what it is. Come on, all of you. Now stay close together. Where, Larson? Up there in the rock, sacre bleu, what a creature. Oh, it's got wings like an airplane, and a bill like, like a sword. Oh, it's got four legs. Voyez, voyez, it leaves the ground. We wait, it does take off just like an arrow plant. I'm going No, to... no, Wolf, don't shoot. It's done nothing to us. Ah, oh, but uh, how do I know when it will do something to us? Use your head, man. We're in a strange country which none of us know anything about. The less trouble we stir up, the better. Well, all right. Why are you puzzled, Darno? You have something on your mind? Eh? And I will wager it is the same thing you are thinking of. That huge bird was, uh... Pterodactyl? Exactly that. A what, Lieutenant Darno? Pterodactyl. Like that scaly reptile Tarzan killed back there on the ledge, this bird lived on the earth many thousands of years ago. It also has been considered to be extinct, absolument. And here we find... Did you notice that lizard-like tail, Monsieur Tong? Yes, and the characteristic long legs with short ones in front. Well, uh, didn't that thing have bat wings on the claws of its forelegs? Yeah, sure, Wolf. And a neck easy ten times as long as mine. And that's going a long way. <laughs> so you see... It's not necessary for me to repeat my warning, not to separate under any circumstances. Ah, Voltasan, noon. It's coming on night pretty soon. Uh, hadn't we better get as far ahead as we can and, uh, and find a good place to spend the night? Huh? Right. Let's get on. I thought the jungle had its share of big animals, but even Tantor seems small besides those two we saw today. Hey, see, mon ami. How many more prehistoric beasts shall we encounter tomorrow? Well, there is an ancient Chinese proverb, Dono, which answers that question. Let today be free from tomorrow's cares. <laughs> ah, look there. What is that ahead of us at the side of the road? A milestone? Uh, it's another one of those devil shrines. Ah, I can see the death head masks from here. Uh, let's let's go around and, and leave it alone. Huh? <laughs> Wolf, Wolf, with a name like yours, one should not fear such things as carved stone masks. It appears to be exactly like the one in the causeway. And identical with the one Tarzan and I found on the ledge this morning. Perhaps it is a road direction of ancient days, hmm? Or a warning. A warning, Tarzan? What makes you think that? Simply the fact that I doubt very much that any stranger was ever welcome in this country. By the way, Tom, you can't read these inscriptions? Why, I know. No, of course not. 
Why do you ask? Because they seem to interest you so very much. <laughs> As does anything related to the study of archaeology, my friend. Well, here's our campsite. No very soft beds for you people, but it's off the road and protected by those cliffs. Adano, Wolf, Lawson, uh, we'll take a look around. Now, spread out. We'll be back in a few minutes, Tom. Very well. Hmm. Magra, have you by any chance mentioned my knowledge of hieroglyphics to anyone in the party? Why, no. I was... For reasons of my own, I do not wish them to know. Therefore, say nothing. It may mean the saving of our lives. As you wish, Atan. But what did the inscription say? Could you read them? Easily. Tarzan guessed correctly, my child. They are a warning, age-old, but still sinister. Advance, and thou bringest upon thine house the curse of the eater of souls of our share. Oh, a ton. They are returning. Well, Tarzan, did you find anything? Nothing. You can all rest easy tonight. I'll take the first watch. Uh, you next, Darno, then Larson, and then Tome. If you take the last watch. Even Tarzan, tireless as he is, welcomes the cool darkness of night. The others, completely worn out by their long march over the iron-hard road, beneath the intense rays of a blazing sun, drop at once into the sleep of utter exhaustion. At the end of his watch, Tome awakens Wolf and reports no sign of any living... The German, only half awake, drops wearily to a seat upon a boulder close by. He leans back against the cliff wall his rifle across his knees. Drowsily, he ruminates upon the death heads carved in the stone wall of the causeway and the shrine. In imagination, he beholds those great, hollow eye sockets fastened upon him in a baleful glare. He tries to struggle to his feet. Desperately, he fights in the clutch of the awful nightmare. He tears open his eyes. An icy chill runs over him as he realizes he's not dreaming. In his ears is a strange, weird wailing. He lifts his head and stares directly into two great gleaming orbs. Tarzan! Tarzan! Help! 